Hello everyone and welcome back to Dreaming AI. My name is Nuke and today we are going to learn how to use Comfy UI for a perfect face swap. To do this we will use a node called Reactor, which utilizes multiple models for face detection, swapping and reconstruction. If you have a portable version of Comfy UI like me, you simply need to go to the Comfy UI custom nodes directory then open the console and run this command. And after that, navigate to the node directory and run install.bat. Uh, most likely you'll encounter some heroes, so go back to the Reactor GitHub and download the pre-built version of Insight Face that is compatible with the Python version running Comfy UI. In the portable version, uh, the Python version is 3.10. Then, go to the Python embedded folder of Comfy UI Portable, open the console, and execute this command. Also, download these two models as described in the repository's readme and place them in a folder called Facer Store underscore models inside the models folder. Perfect. Now run Comfy UI and find a reactor node inside the menu image post-processing or by using a search. At this point, let's try a test on a static subject right away. I've generated these two images that we'll use for the face walk. Uh, connect a source image to the image from which you want to take the facial features and connect the input image to the image you want to modify the face. Finally, connect a simple preview node to display the processing result. And then select the models that have been taken off best. And then proceed to generate the final image. As you can see, the face appears somewhat blurred. To fix this, select a model for face restoration. I know that many people on Automatic 11.11 prefer GFPGN, but I recommend trying both as I've found that Codeformer often produces excellent results. Uh, while we wait, let me quickly explain the other settings of this node. The swap model is currently the only one responsible for reconstructing the face in the new image. Face detection identifies the model responsible for detecting the face in both the source and input images. Detect gender for source and input allows you to choose whether you want the model to identify the gender of the subjects in the images. Um, I recommend keeping it set to no as it seems to yield better results. Uh, source and input faces index identify the number assigned to the faces detected from left to right and top to bottom in their respective images. If you have only one face, the index should remain at zero. In advanced usage of this node, it's also possible to include and modify multiple faces simultaneously by separating the indices with a comma. Finally, console log level is simply the level of detail for the log that appears in the system console. As you can see, it's a very simple yet highly functional node. Perfect. Uh, note that Reactor's task is to modify the facial features of the final image to make it as similar as possible to the initial image, and it won't take any colors from the original one. Right, now let's move on to something more satisfying. Uh, this technique 
can be confidently used in the development of professional films, and I find it absolutely realistic that if it hasn't already started, it will be used very soon. A film production company, for example, could use it to replace a stuntman's face with the lead actor one with very little effort. Then to use it in our uh, allowed comfy UI, simply replace load image with load video. I'm using this video available for free on Vitavo for our tests. And replace preview with save video. Additionally, I'll add the frame interpolator to reduce the frames that I process and recreate them later. Um, if you want, since some of you have been asking, it's also possible to apply resizing to the video's images before passing them to the interpolator. This way, if you initially reduced the video's quality to speed up processing, you can partially restore it in the end. Of course, the quality of the resize depends on the parameters and the type of resize you choose, and it's quite impossible to reach the quality of the original file, but it's better than nothing. Well, let's start the processing. Okay, it worked great. I'm just sorry that this type of operation is not usable for anime style models, which is my favorite style. I hope in the future they release a model capable of doing that as well. And that's all for today. I hope this tutorial will help you understand how much AI is progressing in this field. Uh, things that used to require hours and hours of preparation can now be done in just a few minutes of your time. And I can't wait to see what the future holds. Please consider liking and subscribing if you found this tutorial useful. Also, if you have any questions, please let me know in the comments below. I'd be happy to help you out as much as I can. And as always, keep dreaming.